Hi, everybody. My name is Rob Craig, and I am a host in the Silverball podcast. I'm talking to you today a little bit about microphones. Um, what you're hearing right now is my voice coming across a Yeti microphone by Blue. Um, I used to be a skeptic on USB microphones, but um, here lately, uh, I, I guess I've, I've become a believer. This microphone has a multi-pattern condenser mic, and uh, you're hearing me through a genuine Blue pop filter. Um, that I actually had to modify the Yeti in order to get the filter on properly. But um, anyway, what I want to do is demo for your ears the Yeti microphone so that you could hear some of the settings on here and uh, you could judge for yourself. Now, previously I was using a Snowball by Blue and it's another USB mic. I did not use a pop filter. Um, it was just for you know general use and um, I, I was uh, later allowed to purchase this one for... Um, the educational use that I use it for, online lecturing. And it's very clear, important, because I want the students to be able to hear me very clearly. I'm not in a sound room. I'm actually in my office. The desk is hard surface. I'm tapping on that right now. Um, I have a drink back here. You can hear the straw. Um, great for sound effects here. I can have some keys off to one side, and I'll bring those keys around to the other side so you can hear them. Um, so I'm just in an office. I have a fridge running, some background noise. Hopefully that's attenuated a bit. But the room is definitely not a sound room. Now, I want to demo some of the other patterns for you. So again, right now you're hearing me in the stereo setting on the Yeti. Now I've turned the microphone setting off to uh, off of the stereo setting onto the Omni setting. And of course, in the Omni setting, it's going to pick up sound all around. And uh, we actually are still feeding in two inputs, but uh, it's quite mono. And it's just an omni pattern. Um, I'm taking these keys and I'm going all the way around the microphone right now. And uh, it's okay. It's mono. But it, the purpose is it can pick up the sound no matter where I am. And it actually has an incredible pattern here because I'm off to the right, way over here to the right side. And now I'm going to come over here to the left. And I don't know if you can really tell much of a difference, but it's quite impressive. And I think you might have to add your gain back a little bit. But otherwise, it's good, um, especially if you want to pick up background noises because... Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm dropping a pen on the table, tapping, and now I'm on the keyboard. And, uh, you know, so if that's what you want to get, you can certainly get it out of this particular directional setting, or non-directional setting, rather. And now I'm over here in a cardioid pattern, my favorite mono pattern. Um, I'm going to probably use this particular setting a lot for doing podcasts um, or lectures, um, because it's just the, really the right setting that I would use. And, of course, if I'm going to record any voiceovers um, from other talent for a video game design, I'd probably use this setting right here. Maybe not for sound effects, but depending on which effect I'm going after, if I need some type of environmental effect, I probably would not use this setting. Okay, now you're hearing me in the figure eight pattern selection on the back of the microphone. And it's, it's pretty solid. I mean, whenever I come over here to the side, uh, you can barely hear me. And then... I as I come around to the back, tonal qualities are a little different, but uh, not much. So off to the side again. Can you hear this at all? Hardly any signal really coming out. As I come back around to the front, the field is clear. Uh, so it's a pretty interesting setting, the figure eight. Uh, really good for an interview um, if you have somebody across from you. Uh, perhaps some other sound effects and maybe even a mid-side recording. Okay, I'm back in front now, and I'm in the stereo setting. And I'll go ahead and conclude this by saying that the uh, the, the installation of this sort of thing, uh, a USB microphone, really isn't that, that hard or problematic. There might be some adjustments that you have to make in your operating system. I'm a Windows user, so uh, it took me about five seconds to go ahead and tell the system that the Yeti wasn't a, a speaker, but it's rather a microphone, and to set that as default. Once I accomplished that, I jumped into Adobe Audition, and it did not yet find the Yeti. So inside Adobe's hardware setup, there's some adjustments that have to be made. Um, and, and I went inside the, con the control panel, and I actually selected the Yeti. It could see it, but I had to select it as a device that was available to Adobe Audition. Once I did that, I was able to select the, the Yeti and use it as an input device. And uh, it was, you know, the whole setup took me probably three or four minutes to use it. But overall, I think that this is a strong buy. I would totally recommend this product. At about $100 right now from B&H Photo and surely other places like Amazon, it's a really can't-beat mic. However, 
I would definitely go with some sort of pop filter with any microphone that's a condenser for sure. And I would recommend the blue um, pop filter for this. It's a little pricey. And in fact, on the Yeti, you have to drill a hole to actually mount this thing if you want to do it solidly. But I think I would recommend this thing. It's a little expensive, but it looks so darn good over the microphone and it serves its purpose well. Hope you enjoyed this review.